And are my different? Yes. So, Commissioner Peak. Present. Commissioner Castagna is absent. Um, Commissioner Thomas. Here. Oh. Um, Commissioner Evans. Yes, I'm here. Commissioner O'Neill. Here. Commissioner Sovereign. Here. Commissioner Matowski is absent. Okay, our first order of business is the approval of the minutes from, I guess that was 8-4. So anybody have any questions or comments, corrections? Uh, hearing none, do I? We have a motion to approve the minutes. A motion to approve the minutes. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstaining? Okay. So our next order of business is to receive the Museums and Cultural Arts Division Activity Report. So I guess this there, is. There are public comments ah. briefly, just in the chance. Okay. Um, and to share with those who may be watching online, there are two ways to virtually participate if you are not joining here with us in the council chamber. To join the meeting on Zoom, you may use the link or phone number on the agenda at isearchmonterey.org. To call in by telephone, dial toll free 833 568 8864. Enter meeting ID 161 622 2299, followed by the pound sign. If prompted to enter a participant ID, press pound. Detailed instructions on using Zoom are available at monterey.org forward slash public meetings. If there is anyone here in the council chamber who would like to make a public comment, you are invited to come up to the podium. And if not, then at this time, there are no public comments for Evan. Welcome. Okay, seeing no public comments at this point, uh, let's move on to the Museums and Cultural Arts Division Activity Report. All right. Um, I'll first start out by noting that I on the graph, I changed the, the graphics, so hopefully that is easier, so. The color is great. <laughs> All right, um, so it, by the looks of the report, it looks like it was a, a shorter month for me, but that's a lie. I, um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll go over the, just some major, well, not major, but the, the good stuff, I guess. Um, so on August 10th, I met with interim director Nat. Um, we all know Nat. Um, gave him a tour of the vault. He wanted to check it out. Um, and then let's see, on August 18th at the Pacific Biological Laboratories, I hung some new LED lights up there because we've been getting a lot of complaints of it being really dark. And so it looks like a different area now that it is well lit. And on August 29th, I met with the new library and museums director, Brian Edwards, where I, the first half of the meeting was just going over everything that's been happening the last, basically the last two years of history of art history. Um, and just to update him on the ins and out of museums and then took him to a tour of all of our locations, um, including Colton Hall, the old Monterey Jail, Pacific Biological Laboratories, um, the worker shacks and the vault and our east parking garage um, storage area. And then on August 5th, we had a special visit to the Presidio Monterey Museum where docent Dennis Kelly opened up the, the, the museum for a Russian DLI class. Um, this used to happen before the pandemic a lot where they would come in and practice their interpreting skills. Um, they would have to interpret 
what the docent said to them about the museum in Russian, and then they would be graded on it. And on August 17th, I attended the Christmas in the Adobe's meeting. Um, so it's in the early stages, but we do know that it is on December 9th and 10th. Uh, tickets are gonna be $25 for ages 13 and up. And instead of charging a small fee for younger children, it's just 12 and under is free this year, or for now, at least. Um, other than that, they're still trying to figure things out. Um, if there's gonna be any you know, COVID protocols, um, it's just too early to tell. Last year during planning, things were changing all the way up until the event. But we are happy to be a part of it again, and we'll be asking the commissioners for help for volunteers closer to December. And sure. All right. And the last thing I'll go over is I opened the old Monterey jail for a Krista Cutts of the United States Navy, she is re-enlisting and wanted to have her ceremony there where she is sworn in again. And so it was attended about maybe five people and her commanding officer. So it was a nice little private ceremony and they're really grateful. And that is everything I have to go over. I wanted to share one item that Jordan trained me how to visit the facilities. So while he was away, I had the great opportunity to go to the jail and unlock that huge door to empty the um, water and then also down to the vault in Colton Hall and over the Presidium to get the monies. And then I'm also in the process of working on a couple of permits for the Lower Presidio Historic Park. Thank you. And this is my first official meeting with you guys. I'm Brian Edwards, the new Library and Museums Director. Um, really excited to be here with everybody. Um, just moved into the area, into New Monterey on August 12th and started my role here in Monterey August 16th. So uh, <coughs> as a librarian, I think it's my role to tell you what I'm currently reading, which is uh, Monterey Presence of the Past by Augusta Fink. Um, just looking, I've been reading a lot of different books on Monterey history, so I want to keep that going so I can continue to learn as I grow in this position. Um, I signed up for a program for University of Washington uh, for Certificate in Museum Studies, so I'm starting that next month in October. I have my, my background is a BA in painting, a master's in public administration and management policy analysis, and a master's in library and information science in library management and youth services. And also a couple of different certificates so through IDO and Sacramento State. Um, prior to joining the library and museums, I worked on a couple of grants in partnership with Inga, uh, with, with Nat, with Jordan, with Dennis Copeland, who I appreciate their time. One was submitting a grant for California Reveal and California revealed that was for the 1849 Ruffle collection photos to see if we can get those digitized and up. Um, California revealed is does have a backlog. If folks are familiar with that, California revealed digitizes and puts items on Internet archives so they're accessible. And they are, they have a backlog because of submissions kit or contributed through COVID. And so they're not sure how many um, they're going to approve. Another one was a memory lab at the library so we could have people this is through the library, but people would be able to digitize their own memories and archive things like VHS cassettes, you know, audio cassettes, things like that, so that they don't lose the formats. You can't buy VHS players anymore. You can't, it's really hard to find audio players. So a lot of those media, how do we get it so that they're not lost in time? And a lot of VHS has a lifespan of 10 to 20 years. So can we get those up? And also a uh, collection assessment for preservation program through the Institute of Museum and Library Services, IMLS. That was a um, collections grant to just look at storage and presentation procedures for Colton Hall. So we will see if we get any of those or if there's other grants in the future, but joining on and I appreciate the time from Jordan and from Dennis and I've been meeting with them regularly, just trying to absorb as much knowledge as I can here. Thank you. Anybody on the commission have a question? 
Um, I have one. You, you mentioned a tour of the Gordon House. I haven't heard of the Gordon House in a long time. What's going on? Yeah. That that's where the our office is. Yeah. Director Edwards met me there, and we had our discussion before going on to the other sites. All right. Um, I don't think we need public public comments on this item. Uh, oh, all right, we do. If anyone would like to make a public comment on this item, please, we invite you to the podium. If not, Chair Evans, there are no public comments at this time. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see, the next item we have on our agenda is to discuss and approve the strategic plan priorities for fiscal year 22-23. And so, Brian, you wanna introduce that? Sure, thank you, Chair. I was, um, I know we were sent a draft to um, look at, and I'll say from the last one that was on the um, the previous meeting, which of course I didn't attend, I was just joining on, I removed one of the columns, which was who was responsible because it was consistently staff and commission or staff and subcommittee. Um, when I think at some point it'd be, prudent for us to look at who else, whether that's a nonprofit, whether that's a grant, whether, because it seems like staff and commission would be involved in all. So just putting just staff and commission on, on all of them, we need to figure out who else could be contributing to that, whether that's students or any anything else on here. Um, on here. I did not have a chance to meet um, with both Nat and Jordan at once to just kind of go over all of our priorities on here. So I didn't re-rank really anything besides putting up the on um, goal to the um, the programs, the putting the public history master plan grant project up to proposed priority A, um, CC goal two programs A, that's B. And that's because we're looking at an RFP for that path of history um, the grant that was awarded for $30,000 for that. So we have to put together a, um, I put that up as a proposed priority A because that is something where we have a grant and we have a timeline, we have a deadline for expending the, the money for that grant. So that, that should be a higher priority for something like that. But I do think at some point we should I should sit down with both, you know, with Dennis, with Jordan, with Nat, and also the commission more, spend more time about all the priorities on here. John, you and the, the strategic, and Bill is remotely here, um, that we had a, a subcommittee on the strategic plan. Do you gents have any comments on um, the current priorities? change in the format. Um, there seem to be some things that are sort of history on here, as well as things to do in the future. And I find that a bit confusing. I don't know about anybody else. But it would seem to me we would want to lay out very clearly, what do we want to get done in this fiscal year? And um, then maybe things that we want to do in, in the next fiscal year and so on. But um, and it's it's not clear to me that that's what this says. Am I the only one that feels that way? John? I think not, but I think what happened is... No, I think you're correct. I think some things are kind of dormant in, in the last couple of months, nothing has happened on them. And um, I find value if we list what has been accomplished since the last time we discussed it. And if it's been accomplished, then by the next time we could remove it. This just gives us a little history. And, and I have one question. Um, we used to have a category proposed, proposed priority for the lower Presidio. I, I 
don't see that on this iteration. So did we choose to, to get rid of that or is that an oversight? So on that one, the two items that were on there, there were two items that were completed and then there was one item that was regarding, um, that has moved off to the city and the army are working on it. So that was my understanding is that that was outside of the commission right now. I do think as we're looking at it, what we wanna do for fiscal year priorities, uh, Chair Evans, I think that's makes sense. It would be easier for us to look at even when we're looking, how does this tie in? I'm coming in for just new onto this, but how do these fit into the NCIT? Like how did where because if there's a bunch of items on here that have been completed, but they're still priority A, you know, are we still pushing what are we pushing forward as a priority and what are we asking um, for staff time? Because as we know, we have Jordan and myself <laughs> and some museum attendants, so we don't have time for every priority right now right we need to we need to figure out exactly what we want to focus on for this fiscal year or the upcoming calendar year so we need to do that still yeah I, as my understanding i mean i looked at this and this was just me cleaning up the format but not giving input really okay. you know this for me this is this is looking at a form formatting of it and i would appreciate time to sit down more with the with the commission to figure this out in a better to, to make it make sense for all of us for all of us to have input on there too I think would be great the priorities on there were um, assigned by your predecessor and three commissioners and that's not to say they can't be revised but that's where they came from historically and understanding what you just said it might be useful to meet again and readjust the priorities to the current situation. And that's a subcommittee thing, or is that it a was, commission? It was, uh, when did we do that? July, in July, that, okay. but realizing that um, we have a sophisticated system in this city for how fast <laughs> committees turn over. So I don't know if it's still a commission, right. a committee. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was appointed in July, so you're still alive. Okay, thank you, sir. <laughs> the attack subcommittee and not of the whole. Am I correct in my understanding? If because it's easier no, to do with a smaller group. I can't say that. Okay. I'll leave it up to the new librarian. If we want less people to work on it, fine. If we want to work on it as a commission. Uh, the other two commissioners uh, might say something, but I'm okay with that. Well, the the agenda item says discuss and approve. Hmm. So I guess this is the time to discuss if we're okay. going to approve something. Um, we um, discussed it at the last meeting, and I believe them somewhere I saw that we approved it, but actually we didn't approve it. That's correct, because the copy that we had did not reflect everything that the previous director and the, the subcommittee had discussed. Right. For, for some reason, it didn't get all onto the piece of paper we saw at the last meeting. This is, with the exception of the one that was removed for the reason that we now know, this is accurate reflecting what the last subcommittee meet, meeting accomplished. You know, as John stated, our subcommittee meeting was with Inga. It might be very helpful that the subcommittee meet again with Brian and go over what we feel are the priorities and also what Brian can indicate what are the staff uh, capabilities of meeting those priorities. And then we would bring it back to the commission. Well, it's gonna take another month. <laughs> um, our museums are still here. <laughs> Art's still here. You know, we have time. Time is on our side. So you're suggesting that we be, that we send it back to this subcommittee and they meet with you, and then we have it back next month. I would suggest yes, because it gives me more time to spend with Jordan. Uh, spend more time, as, as I've been saying, with with Dennis, with Nat, and just look over everything look over what the NCIP goals have been submitted to see how that's, to see if those align with, with these here, 
to see if there's any new priorities that have come out regarding any statues, any artwork that is out there that needs repair. I think there are other things on there that we may want to look at on here. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Then um, my last one on on um, goal one B, there's a B2 says postponed NIC, NCIP defunded. Are we gonna resubmit that? Is that part of, it's sort of ha hanging there. 1B was to complete the worker shacks. I don't know, what, what are we completing? I think my understanding is there are some repairs needed. Um, Jordan and I did some tour of that. And on the back wall, there are some damage. And I looked at, looked like there was some kind of rot on some of the posts and on the back. That's my understanding. Jordan, do you have more insight onto that? For just the worker shacks or just anything in general? Or... Yeah, just uh, the worker shacks, it's always the the same issues of either like the plexiglass is frosting up and we need to replace that um, into, as Director Ed Edwards mentioned, like on the, the side wall closest to the, the rec trail, it is flimsy. Um, I mean, these weren't built to last for a long time. And so, yeah, there are some minor repairs, at least on that side. That building was also broken into within the last month or so, um, supposedly on accident according to the police report. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, there's always, with the shacks, always a minor issue that needs to be replaced or fixed. So maybe we ought to change that. Instead of complete, we should say repair. And uh, as far as the NCIP defunded, are we going to resubmit that? Because that's something that has to be done by the end of January or somewhere along in there. Yeah, I don't believe that. Matt, do you want to speak on the NCIP? What's what the status is right now? The when the uh, timeline is. I think what we we reached out this week and uh, we'll connect to identify with um, Public Works to identify the status of all of the museum related NCIP projects. What has been funded? What hasn't been funded? We also would like to have a better grasp on how they were ranked, and very much uh, hope to recommend resubmitting uh, any projects. But uh, it, it, we have we have some we have time on our side, as Brian said, uh, to do that, and uh, we can definitely revisit uh, NCIP, at least in terms of submitting for next year. Um, is that something that should be in the goals for the year? Is to, that we should be reviewing and and resubmitting NC, NCIP projects? Um, there's quite a list, as I recall. Somewhere in my notes here, I have a list of about eight or 10 that were related to museums. So. Well, I'll just add on there from the, that's where I was saying on this one, like in terms of facilities, if it's just staff and commission, I, I can't expect, you know, Jordan or, or myself to do all the repairs on there. That's why it has to be who, you know, the who's involved, that's where I was thinking on that. Who's involved? Is that a community foundation? Is that a nonprofit, another nonprofit group or those volunteers? Is that uh, NCIP? And that's where we would figure that out. So I do think that's why it's better to look again back at this format about how, to, how are we ranking things on here and how does that, because if we are submitting, I believe Inga has submitted eight items for NCIP, but there's not eight items on here that line up for facilities. So that's where I, I think it's, I think it'd be wise for us to add those on there so we know if that's on a fiscal year priority, where does that land on here and who else is involved and what's what's the status of it? Right. Okay, so it sounds like we'll, Brian will reconvene the strategic plan committee and report back next month. Does that work for everybody? Yes. Okay. Then I guess we go to our last action item here. Discuss. Sir Evans. Oh, I'm sorry. The, not a problem. Just in the chance there is anyone who would like to make a public comment on that item, we invite anyone to come up to the podium. Yeah. Please. 
Sorry, John, I forgot the public part after inviting you. Uh, thank you. John Sovereign, I just wanted to briefly uh, reiterate um, the letter I sent to you a couple of weeks ago, just to encourage you to um, promote public art in your strategic plan. Um, I believe there's lots of opportunities for the community, um, and particularly, you know, murals. I uh, hope some of you were able to go to Sand City last weekend and enjoy the new murals there. Um, there we're, we're doing more murals here. That's great. And let's let people know about it and help them do more. Thank you. Thank you, John. And on the strategic plan is an art uh, category. And in that is the um, utility box program that was developed a couple of years ago and has really not progressed uh, in part because we haven't really, I don't think we've reached out to YAC and other groups that, and, and I noticed that the Old Monterey Foundation is listed on that as a resource on that particular uh, category. So again, that's something that I would like to encourage the strategic plan to take a peek at. Okay. Okay. Uh, so come back to our agenda, discuss the potential long-term loan of the Western Flyer model. And of course, the Western Flyer theoretically is on its way back to Monterey, the real uh, Western Flyer. So uh, having the model certainly would be an interesting adjunct. So Brian, you want to introduce that one? Sure thing. So we um, discussed this and I um, believe the question came from Commissioner Thomas um, regarding loaning a model and it's a five foot model replica of the Western Flyer um, first to the library or uh, Kennery Road days, and then to find a place in the museums for a uh, permanent loan to the to the city and the museums department, museum and cultural arts department. So um, after talking with the staff, um, we believe we can find a space for it in the library for um, Kennery Road days. We just were thinking about somewhere near the service desk because it it doesn't have a, a podium and I, because it's five feet the size, I don't wanna put it in right directly in the entrance that may block ADA access or have somebody push a stroller or something into it and knock over the model. Um, but having it somewhere near where it's staff line of sight and having the model around there. Um, but after speaking with Jordan on it too, we looked at the, the first floor of the PBL, Pacific Biological Laboratories, over by, we have the baby flyer down there and then around the corner, there's some, um, you have some of the signage that's there that can be moved out. So it'd be around that area right there to kind of showcase that same um, site. So we have to, we would have to work on basically anything regarding any agreement and what that would look like with the city and any kind of city documentation for a long-term loan, which That'll be new to me working with here with this with this city specifically on a long term loan on that. But my recommendation would be if those would be if it was on a temporary loan assignment at the library that we would have it near our service desk for Kennery Road days and Pacific Biological Laboratories on the first floor. So to highlight that connection there. Tim, you want to add to that? So. This will come about because of the Canada Road Days project. Some of you maybe remember we've been doing this for about three years now. And this year's uh, Canada Road Days is going to focus on the log from the Sea of Cortez. And since the Western Flyer is on its way home, and I know the model maker, Mycroft, uh, Dennis knows him as well. And he is a beautiful master model maker. I have one of his models at the Japanese American Museum. Um, I used to work with him quite a bit when I was with the curator at the Monterey Maritime Museum, and uh, and he this is just a beautiful model. He worked with 
Captain Barry, who was the captain of the, uh, the, of the Western Fly originally, and to get the details correct. It, and what, uh, the model tells a couple of stories. So it, to me, it says a lot about Monterey. So it tells the fishing story, sardine story, but it also tells the story of Ricketts and Steinbeck in their trip to, the, to Mexico. So there's a whole lot going on in this one little model that he, that he built. And I talked to Mike about it. He's typical, a lot of artists, he, he doesn't want to sell it. He doesn't want to donate it, but he's willing to put it up on a long-term loan, essentially a permanent loan, which is not unusual. I get with that, a lot of that with, at, at the museum. And typically when you sign a loan like that, you, you, you usually a long-term loan, you can three years to five years kind of thing. It's really up to you how you want to deal with that. And uh, and that actually works to everybody advantage. Then you go back three years later, you say, does this still fit our mission? Or, you know, then you can give it back or you know, give it back to the artist or not, but it, depending how you felt with it. But it, yeah, it's just typical how, how he likes to operate. Um, he's very protective of his, of his model that does have a case. Uh, if we do take it in on a longer term and you move it to Ed's lab, which actually on the first floor would be a good place for it to be. Um, I would suggest that we could find monies to actually have a case built for it. So you could put it on wheels and move it around if you need to do that. And you can do that fairly inexpensively, actually, but depending on how you want to do that. But this, to me, it, it tells a big story. He actually has another model of another Monterey starting boat called the City of Monterey, which was an actual boat that fished in Monterey in the 1930s, which also tells a big Monterey story, but that he'd like to find a home for him. Speaking of the story, do you anticipate, or does he have material to go with it that people might read if they were? We'll have, we'll have to do that part of it. I mean, some will have to write checks for it, um, which I could do. You know, we can get some of the right text for it. I'd be willing to volunteer my time to do that. Or there you go. Yeah, and, and, and we have photographs, and and I have photographs of Mike actually building the model, but we have some photographs of the actual Western Flyer. So there's. So we can tell that story. Yeah. Okay. Um, John. John C. Um, to me, uh, it would make more uh, would be better if you could keep it in the library somewhere. Um, the number of people who would see it at, at you know the lab is appropriate, but you'll only have at best a hundred people a day, uh, a month. Right. By. To no, I, I agree. Yeah. And if you could find a, a space in the library and perhaps uh, have a Steinbeck corner with some of his books. I think he generated a lot more interest. Well, that's the reason I wanted to put in the library to begin with, I thinking think that would be, it'd be the most visible place. And then, then the conference center was also still talked about too. Um, but the conference center, there's some security issues, I understand I think the library that. Would be ideal. So. I'll just say it on, on the library side. I'm, as just joining on, one of the, my priorities is looking at there was a group for development plan for that library of how to remodel the space and everything and I would love to look at how do we do an introductory change of that space to for the community and so I think we would have to look at anything we do takes one space takes space from somewhere else right and so we have to if we're doing anything in the library we have to look at the library as a whole and really redesign Okay, this is where if you're going to add a, if the community really wants a Steinbeck area there, do we, what is replaced with it? You know, what do we take out so that we can highlight this? So that is something that we have to think about. And also the process for accepting a loan from the Museums Commission going into the library. So th there's all, there are all things to work out. But I, I do think in the library, in the, the larger scope, I want to figure out everything on the whole placement before putting on anything in a long-term basis. Jordan? And if I could just add on that, if it if it is to go to the library, wouldn't it be best then for the library board or them to accept it? Because then it's going through us and then we have to loan it out to the library and do the paperwork for that. Um, and so that may be something that we look at as well. Yeah, I, I'll chime in and I, I think Jordan is correct in that any type of Approval, you know, would need to go through library. You know, Brian on wearing his library director hat and 
the uh, Board of Trustees. I think from a legal perspective, the library is and the museums is part of the city. So we're, we're one entity uh, and it was, that, that's not as much of the issue, but I agree, you know, definitely our library board needs to uh, review. And as, as Brian, just echoing what Brian said, space utilization is a, a key challenge, just like with the city budget, every dollar has a purpose. One, every dollar we spend on fire, for example, does, is one less dollar we're spending on museums or vice versa. The space utilization in the library uh, is uh, valuable. So any every inch of the library that's being used for collections is less for say teens or children's space. And same thing with uh, the size of, uh, of this, uh, trying to figure out, is this a good fit for given the limited space uh, that we have? So uh, not, not saying no, not saying yes, just a conversation that the Brian will have to have with his team and, uh, and with the library board. Tim, do you have any idea of what the plans for the Western Flyer organization is gonna do once they get the ship here? Are they gonna have some kind of center? Or I know they're talking about education programs and whatnot, but right. it seemed to me that they might end up wanting this model to go in their- Right, and we talked to them about that. And it's, that's uh, the eventual plans are is to have some kind of interpretive center. Um, but they're not sure where that's going to be. Um, ideally it would be down uh, uh, the dock where they're going to put the boat, but we don't know. But yeah, I understand that. And what you say, because there again, that's why this may not be really a, a permanent loan so much as a timely, timely loan. And I, it would be interesting to know exactly what their plans are. I don't think they know what their plans are <laughs> at this point right now either. So, other than getting the ship back here. Uh, Mike. Yes, and at, as I remember, at the PBL, there is a five-foot, roughly, skiff with it that says uh, Western Flyer on the back of it. Oh. And uh, it doesn't get much attention or, a, you know, it is there, nearly... There's a model of the Ted Lab that came from the old Maritime Museum of a bottle a boat called the Chincota Brothers. And it was actually made in the 1930s by Shipwright. Chincota Brothers had two shops, one in Monterey and one in San Francisco that serviced the sardine fishery industry. That's what they did. And those models came from the Chincota family. So one of them went to San Francisco Maritime and the other I had a mo I, I transferred to the city and it was put brought down to the lab. That's the other one that's down there. It's a beautiful, model sardine boat made by professional model or professional boat builder just really quick i think what commissioner sovereign isn't referencing to is the there's the life-size replica of the baby flyer down there oh that yeah, yeah, yeah. and so that is down there and along with yeah. the, the boat that commissioner thomas was just mentioning yeah i think you're right so it sounds like we need better access to the lab so we can exhibit all these things um, which is one of the items on our strategic plan that we should be looking at at some point um let's see do we have anybody in the public that would like to comment on this potential loan to the city of the western flyer anybody outside on bill have you got your hand up or you're just no. Okay, no, I'm sorry, I don't. No. Okay. Francesca, anybody outside? No. All right. So it sounds like where do we go from here? When is it available? No, right now. Right now. Okay. And we need to do something fast. Uh, Commissioner Thomas, can you confirm with me what date the Cannery Row Days are happening? I'm sorry? What, what date are the Cannery Row Days happening this year? When is the When were the proposed dates to um, loan to the library? Right. Oh, I'm, you know what? I didn't hear what you said. Sure. What they, dates for the Cannery, for oh, cannery Row Days? So, oh, good question. So usually that started in September, but because of various issues, we had to push it back. So we're, and we haven't picked a date. But we're hoping it will start in October. 
So Susan Shillingla, who's sort of my partner in this whole thing, um, she, uh, I, uh, um, she had been camping in Colorado, but she's back now. So I will get contact her and uh, see if we can set up a meeting to work to get all that worked out. And Canary Road Days is how many days? You know, it's been going on the uh, last couple of years. It, it covers about two months. It's, it's always been a, a Zoom kind of thing. And uh, so we have different lectures once a week. And then, uh, but we're hoping that this year we can sort of open up a little bit and have some public programming. And uh, besides not just lectures, but uh, some public programming that may go down to the great type pools, things like that. Um, but that's to be determined. John? Would it be helpful uh, to have the library board uh, discuss this as a, on their agenda for the next meeting uh, about the pros and cons of putting it in a library? And I will state that the library board next meeting is September 22nd, so I can bring this up at that Perfect. time too. Okay, any other questions, comments? Yeah. So it sounds like the ball is in your court, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> And that's the end of our agenda. It's time for commissioner comments. So let's start with Kimberly. Uh, nothing, <laughs> except it's nice to see everyone. <laughs> John? Uh, do something about the situation here. Uh, I just got back from LA and the traffic here was much worse yeah. getting, getting to this <laughs> meeting. Otherwise I have no comments. <laughs> Jim? I just had one thing, and I, I I expressed this in an email yesterday. But I and I know you guys have been working on this, so I'm really happy about that. But I just want to point out that I was on Cannery Row on Tuesday, and uh, I noticed the terrible shape of the Bruce Aries mural that's in down there. It's just totally rotting at the bottom. It's in really bad condition. And it's going to go away. And so my suggestion is that the and I understand you guys are working on this one. So to get to find to have it uh, repaired, but if we can't get the monies, I, my suggestion is we take it down until you can and store it away. And also with that, Jordan, you know, my uh, have you ever seen the original artwork for that for that mural? I have not, because the original artwork is is a far more detailed. So it would be great, and I know where it is. Artwork. It would be great to have a photograph of that and incorporate into your interpretive panel about that painting. It's just an amazing painting when you see the painting itself. And I know the owner of that painting would be more than happy to let you to let the city do that, to have a good photograph of it taken. But I appreciate the fact that you guys are working on it now, so I won't say more about it. <laughs> John? Well, it's nice to work with Brian. Welcome. And it's Hey, Dennis and Claudia. Hey. That's all. Mike? Yes, I'd, I'd like to refer to page six of the packet where my comment last meeting, and since Brian was not here, which that comment I think is, is still true, um, we're, we really need to find a better way with the city staff. And I, th I think that's still somewhat apparent today. I'm very happy to see Nat here with us. Uh, and I think if, if, if that's a regular thing, that would be good. Uh, so this, this is an issue that you know, needs addressing above us or Brian or Nat. <laughs> I think the city council needs to address this. Issue. Well, in that vein, um... I'm wondering uh, if we, we or the, and the city and the city council ought to have a discussion on just what is the function of the commission? Do we wait for staff to do things or can commissioners, as Tim has just uh, volunteered to write a piece to go with a display, uh, should or can commission members be more proactive or more helpful um, since we have such we have I think we have some very talented people on the commission myself excluded of course uh, but uh, I think 
and I think they're willing and interested in doing things. And so I think that's a would be a valuable discussion, along with the fact we have do we have clarity on uh, the activity of uh, adjunct or ad hoc committees uh, Nat? The uh, feedback on the ad hoc committees is that uh, if there are specific topics, ad hoc committees can be formed. Uh, of course, it can't be more than a majority of the, as, as you know, the majority of the, the board. Uh, and and they really do need, as, as we discussed last meeting, they do need to be ad hoc. In other words, not uh, Golden Hall sub ad hoc subcommittee that starts and then restarts and then starts and then restarts periodically it, it really needs to be something that's that's specific i would also advise that there are there may be areas where feedback from a uh, ad hoc subcommittee may be valuable working with the museum's uh, staff uh, but uh, my recommendation is to work with the department head and uh, see where that ad hoc subcommittee feedback may be most helpful. Because if if uh, Jordan and Brian, as an example, don't have the staffing resources to support the ad hoc subcommittee, uh, we may be working against each other in terms of prioritization and uh, and, and and needs. Uh, you know, having said that, there may be areas uh, that. Uh, Director Edwards and, and Jordan can identify that uh, where a ad hoc subcommittee could be valuable. Uh, the other question I, I think is worth asking ourselves too is, is it more helpful to have feedback from an ad hoc subcommittee or is it a, are certain things better to bring forward uh, for feedback from the entire commission as well? So those are just initial thoughts uh, being kind of uh, relatively new to to this or re-inserting uh, myself through this process. So in the past, we've had, let's say, we've had art subcommittee and we've had uh, music subcommittee. And for instance, if we were gonna have uh, Colton Hall concerts this spring, that committee would be uh, beginning to think about a fundraising campaign between now and the first of the year. Then um, the committee would be uh, or somebody creates a letter, staff has in the past created a letter that would go out uh, to raise funds, then a staff member would create a letter that would go out to solicit music groups. Then the committee um, listens to all the submissions and makes a recommendation to the commission. Uh, now that, and if we're gonna do this every spring, you've got a reoccurring committee. Uh, on reoccurring, so can we have reoccurring uh, short-term committees? Um, and is it possible that the committee from this year, um, how many members can serve the next year, for instance? Mm -hmm. And the same thing would happen with, with an art committee where we're trying to, to pick uh, a group to exhibit in the uh, conference center. Um, so there's some, those, those are my questions. You know, how do we handle this under this new uh, edict? I think my understanding on that would be that it would be having more of the conversations here in the chambers or that, you know, tell me if I'm wrong, but basically allowing more public comment on the side if, if we're choosing performers or choosing art or anything like that by having a full discussion. So if it was an ongoing thing, but if there was something where we had a specific grant or a specific, maybe possibly like a specific process for an art thing that we went through that needed a subcommittee for that, we, we may need a subcommittee for a specific project, but it was, um, my understanding is that it's a if that's a recurring thing so like there is a i see a colton hall and old jail subcommittee and art subcommittee and like you're saying there's pacific biological laboratories subcommittee where those are not really short term because they're they're recurring every year and so instead of having those discussions here as part of the full commission 
And I think there's some benefit there. I'll use the the music uh, uh, feedback on uh, musicians and music at Colton Hall as as one example. It may be uh, more perhaps efficient use of staff and your time to have uh, get feedback from the entire group, provide direction and and input to uh, staff uh, to prioritize when you know if the program's funded then what does it look like in terms of the types of music uh, and the performers and then brian and his team comes back to the commission with recommendations and then all of you can have the discussion so i, I think that's uh, that's certainly a a consideration than necessarily having a subcommittee for it. it allows for more inclusiveness, more public feedback as well, and more feedback from more of you rather than a subset of the Museums and Culture Arts Commission. Well, I have to speak out here because when you get down to the actual performance or the uh, implementation, somebody has to listen to 10 or 12 submissions. And is it gonna be the entire commission? Or are you going to appoint three people but not call it a subcommittee? It seems like you're playing the game. But. Mm -hmm. I think what we'll do maybe, uh, and we can talk more uh, and find out if it would be acceptable in, in this instance to have a ad hoc subcommittee just for a specific uh, call for proposals period, because it's it's a short it's a short term uh, time frame which meets the requirement for an ad hoc subcommittee, I think the question for our city attorney's office is, is it okay to have that ad hoc subcommittee just for the call for this year? And then we determine who the next subcommittee might be for next year, if, if this is the process uh, that we would like to continue as it has been in the past years. Right. Um, about a year or so ago, we had a meeting with the three city attorneys and I asked the question, are we employees of the city? And they all agreed that we, the commission, are not employees. Well, are we not then the public? Is this not a way that the public makes input to the city activities? And, and so, you know, somehow this distinction that anything we do is the city decisions rather than public decision is is not clear to me at all. Okay, so you can see we're we're looking for guidance. I think um, I'm, we certainly welcome you, Brian, right into the into the spider's nest here, um, and uh, we look forward to. Many more meetings with you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Spider's nest or the spider's web. Well, yeah, it could be either way. It depends on what type of spider. Okay. With that, uh, I, any further comments from anybody? I think Bill didn't get it. Oh, Bill. I have no comments. That's unusual. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Jordan. I have a quick comment because um, I don't know how I missed putting it in the commission report in the madness of the last two weeks, but um, it's nothing important. I just wanted to inform everyone that I visited over the weekend, the California African American Museum in Los Angeles, and they have a Buffalo Soldiers exhibit going on right now of California. Oh. And so the plan was to go down there, take pictures of how they did their exhibits and to research any Monterey information. Unfortunately, there was no mention of Monterey whatsoever, even on their large map, it has San Francisco. Um, they, they really didn't mention the 1904 trip to Yosemite that the Buffalo Soldiers from Monterey went to. And so it ended up not being that great of a trip for information wise, but I got some pictures that I can try to incorporate for the our future exhibit uh, with some new ideas. All right. So if there are no more comments, I'll call the meeting adjourned.